Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my hundredth mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Welcome to Saturday Story Circle, always on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. Speed Gibson of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Speed, Clint, and Barney send a cablegram in code to Chief Riley of the International Secret Police stating that a jewel smuggler was also aboard the clipper bound for Hong Kong. But they did not mention that Marsha Winfield, governess to little Jean Kingsley, is also going to China and has asked their protection during the flight, hinting that she, too, is seeking the mysterious criminal, the octopus. That same night, they surprise an intruder in their bedroom and after a terrific struggle, overcome the man and discover him to be the jewel smuggler who was aboard the China Clipper. After turning the man over to the local police, we find the boys talking in their room just as dawn is breaking. What a night. I'm sleeping along just as peaceful. And all of a sudden, I wake up and see that guy's face almost touching mine. He was trying to hear what you were saying in your sleep, Barney. It's getting so a guy don't have any privacy at all anymore. People climbing up balconies and listening to every word you say. Yeah, we're darn lucky to get out of that as well as we did. What were you stirring up such a rumpus? What'd you expect me to do? Give that thug a sweet smile? Well, he gave him plenty of noise. And on top of that, you couldn't find the lights. Of course I couldn't. Somebody's foot was in my eye. <laughs> It sure was a mess. Half the time, I didn't know which was Barney and which was the jewel smuggler. Oh, so you're the guy that kept hitting me in the dark. No, Barney, honest. Well, if you ask me, we were lucky to get out of it as easy as we did. That smuggler waving his gun around like that. Hey, one of us might have been seriously hurt. I'll say. The darkness made it hard for us to see him. But I was lucky at that. Because he certainly couldn't see us good enough to aim a gun at us. You know, it's a funny thing. No matter what happens, I always get the worst of it. Must be fate, I guess. But if you don't keep your head better when any emergency arises like that, you won't have any fate. What's the matter with you, anyhow? You've had enough training in the past to be ready for anything. You're right there, old pal, old pal. Ready for anything. And believe me, I get everything. What did you expect me to do while that guy was jumping on my neck? Relax and enjoy sweet and beautiful dreams? No, but you might have feigned sleep a while longer. That smuggler had a gun. You're telling me? That bullet parted my hair. Clint and me were just sneaking up on him when you woke up, Barney. Another minute and we would have had him. Well, you got him, all right. With me on the bottom of the pile. After this, I don't sleep in front of no more doors or windows. <laughs> well, that was your own idea, you know. You wanted air and wanted to see the moonlight. <laughs> yeah, and I saw stars, too. That fella had a punch like a pile driver. Why do you think he came to our room, Clint? Well, to get the key to our international secret police code. You mean our disguise is having fooled the octopus gang? They know who we really are? Yeah, I'm afraid so. By coming to our room, the smuggler proved to me that he was a member of the octopus band. And also that our disguises are useless. Then we can forget them? No, while they may know that we're the secret police, I'm sure they don't know how we really look. Uh, me, at least. You know, I've been careful of that in the past. And as long as they're not sure of my real appearance, I... May be able to get through their lines yet. But, Clint, what about us? I want you to stay out of this whole mess, Speed. You're in it more now than I counted on. I'm sorry that I ever let Chief Riley talk me into bringing you along. Oh, wait, Clint, I wouldn't miss this for air anything. Let the kids like me to fight crime in every way we can. I'm luckier than the rest because I'm getting a crack at the octopus. Uh, you've done more than your share so far, Speed. 
Capturing Blackie Spears in my room, discovering the jewel smuggler tonight. I'm proud of you. But now with the octopus aware of who we really are, I want you to just stay out of the picture. That's right, kid. You'll run into more danger since leaving Alameda than I've had in a year. But I'll say you know what to do in a pinch. So far, you've done all the head work of this outfit. Oh, no, Barney. I've just been lucky. But I sure wish I could do away with these glasses I have to wear for a disguise. Eh, you'll have to keep them a while longer, Speed. If there was no other reason for keeping our disguises, passport difficulties would be enough. If we assumed our real identities now, <laughs> we'd have to do a lot of explaining to the Clipper officials. That's so. The Clipper captain and the crew don't know about us being in the secret police. But the octopus does. Yeah, the octopus. I give a lot to know just how much information he does have. What does the octopus call us here for? Anyone know? Does anyone know the master's desires until he has spoken, Splintaz? No, but he seems to know what everyone else is thinking, though. <sighs> Gives me the creeps coming to this room. Nothing in it but that microphone for him to hear us and that loudspeaker for him to talk through. Your feelings are unimportant in the matter. This meeting is important. It is the first time the Hong Kong branch of the band has been gathered together. Since we first started operation here. Oh, yeah? Talk some more, Kwan Wu. I ain't been with you long, so anything you tell me is news. The band of the octopus does not waste words. The master is successful because he acts. Well, why don't he show himself? This mystery business is okay for the yokels, but I'd like to know who I'm working for and what I'm heading for. You are heading for disaster if you keep up this foolish talk, Splinters. The master pays you well for the work you do. Yeah, but you've seen his face. Why can't I? I'm one of the best aviators in the sky. I can do everything with a plane but make it cook. And still I can't see who I'm working for. It is best not to, Stintas. I have seen the master's face because I am the only one he can trust. I have always been with him. Well, I'm sick of the whole business. I've been sitting around in this private underground hangar till I've forgotten what the sky looks like. I won't do it no longer. I want action. You call yourself Splinters? Huh? Yeah? Uh, octopus? I have heard your complaint. Do you wish to leave my service? No, 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 not that. When they leave you, they, they leave the world, life, everything. They never heard of again. I was talking foolish, Octopus. I'll keep my mouth shut after this, I promise. Your promises are less than nothing to me. Kwan Mu hired you because you are a good aviator. Yeah, the best I can do. I, I know can... your record in here. And also on the ground, Splinters. You are one of the lowest type of criminal. A renegade aviator. A man who will fly for anyone who can pay him. Regardless of the purpose. A man without conscience. Without heart. As unfeeling as the ship he flies. I... But I, uh... I need such a man for my work. But such a man must not complain. For then he will be punished. I have certain underground dungeons for such punishment. No, no. No, not, not torture. I ain't done anything against you, Octopus. I, I work for you hard. Don't torture me. I will give you a chance to prove your worthiness of remaining in the band of the Octopus. What? How? A anything. One move. Yes, Master. I have just been talking to the Honolulu office over my short wave set. Operator 41 was arrested two hours ago on a charge of burglary. Burglary? Then... Yes. Only Speed Gibson, Clint Barlow, and Barney Dunlap could be responsible, since their room was the only one he was going to search. Operator 41 must have been clumsy. The boy, Speed Gibson, was the real cause of his capture. A kid? For your information, Splinters, this boy is Clint Barlow's nephew. Barlow is not only the cleverest and most intelligent man in the International Secret Police, but he's raising this orphaned boy as his own and has taught him the rules of the Secret Police, trained him to follow in his footsteps should he so desire. And it is Barlow's heart that I will attack through his nephew. 
Since Barlow is our worst enemy, Master. The only one I acknowledge, Kwanmu. The only one who might end my career. <laughs> but he made his one mistake when he brought the boy on this trip. For what reason did the boy come? Chief Riley thought that such a move would remove suspicion. All three of his guys, traveling under assumed names. For the time being, I shall allow them their masquerade. May I humbly ask why, then, you cause the warning note to be presented to them under the dinner check, master? More to frighten the Winfield girl. Women are troublesome. I wanted her to stay away from China. Was she frightened? Yes, but the little fool has the courage of ignorance. She's coming to China under the protection of our enemies. Does she know who they are? Not yet. That note also worried Barlow, not because of his own safety, but that of his nephew. Speed Gibson is the vulnerable point in Clint Barlow's armor. What is your plan? First of all, nothing must interfere with our business of smuggling. The men I have assigned to take care of that will not concern themselves with this warfare against our enemies. Juan Mu, you are friendly with Dr. Kingsley, the little girl's father. Very, Master. I see him almost every day at the consul's office. He thinks very highly of me. Good. The more you are in his confidence, the more you will learn about Marsha Winfield. I want you to work on that alone. You know the background there, Kwanu. Yes, Master. It will be a pleasure. Now for the International Secret Police. It is Monsieur Pierre Dorsey and Jim at Earl Fletch. I am not attempting to interfere with their activities so long as they are aboard the clipper ship. That would be foolhardy. It is the stopovers that concern me. Those are the places where I can reach them. But Master Operator 41 is no longer flying with them. I know, but there are other ways. They leave Honolulu very short. They will reach Midway Island in about eight hours. They will leave Midway the following morning. Fly over the international date line and reach Wake Island Sunday afternoon. Sprinters. Yeah, yes, sir. I want you to take my special bullet monoplane and fly to Wake Island. You will leave immediately and await the clipper plane from Midway. Do I go alone? Yes, but you will have a passenger when you return, at least. You'd better have a passenger. I, uh, I will. Who will it be? Speed Gibson.